All right, we are recording, people. We are live online. If you don't want your picture on, you can shut your video off. I'm fine with that. I don't show your faces very often anyway, unless you speak. Um, we're live at KCC, and it's a little here right now. Um, there's still people coming in the room. We are moving on to more, um, more advanced settings in Zoom. If you're not sure if you're ready for that, you either don't have to stay or you can just listen and multitask. I'll be like a radio station in the background or you can come back and visit the recording, but I'm also gonna give you some resources because I did a lot of recordings last night and today to share with you. You're introducing yourselves because you're so good. In the room, we have all three schools. Again, remember that what works for one school may not work for another. Ooh, are we ready? Am I ready? Last one. So we are doing advanced Zoom and I wanna go over things like polling, which I, am, I stink at, but I'm gonna try my best. I'm gonna talk about break ro breakout rooms. And I talked in the last about my feeling about co-pilots. We'll do that as well. And I'll go through a lot of the settings, which I ran out of the box to write that. And I have a video for you. This one's a fun one. All right, let's see which students decide to join the meeting. Today. Hey, Miss Johnson. OMG, how have you been? Isn't this pandemic crazy? I'm so bored. Very crazy. How are you? I'm so happy you asked. I've read, I've painted, mm -hmm. um, I've played video games, I dyed my hair, I've made a million TikToks, I've done puzzles, I've watched all of Netflix. That is a lot. How's the class going? I see you haven't turned in any of your assignments. Katie, I love your pet. What's its name? It's Coconut. This is my other pet, Hot Dog. Oh, you have more than one? Yeah. This is Sweetie Pie. Wow, three is a lot. Well, let's get back to the list. Sarah? Sarah? Okay, well, it seems Sarah has more important things to do. Is there anybody else that can help with answering number two? Macy, what did you get for question number five? Okay, well, as you can see here on my paper, I got Macy, um, all I can see is your eye. If you could like scoop back from the camera just a little bit, that would be really great. Kyle, do you have anything to add to the conversation? Kyle? Kyle? Um, no, I didn't get that one. Yeah, sorry. Jared, are you there? the reconnecting prank. Jerry? <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Damien, what are you doing? You're making me dizzy, man. Oh, sorry, Miss J. Uh, my mom told me that I had to clean up my mess or she wouldn't give me my Xbox back. <sighs> Could you maybe do that after we finish the lesson? I can ask her, I guess. Mom! I see Matt got creative with his free time. Is that you in the background eating, proudly displaying your cat, and taking a nap? Wow. Hey guys, I made it. Emma, are you listening? I know you don't feel like being on camera and I totally understand that, but I do need to know if you're understanding everything. So can you show me like a, a thumbs up or a sideways thumb or an upside down thumb? That'd be great. Love the background, Sonia. Very fun. This is Bubbles. teachers like we have time to be bored anymore I wish um, hopefully all of your students are angels this year when they're online but that's a fun one <laughs> okay 
So let's get moving. I'm going to kind of let you know that there are things that you can do before a meeting, things you can do during a meeting, and things that you can do after a meeting. And they all happen in different places, except for before and after, for the most part, is in your dashboard, where during the meeting is happening, like with the settings that are on your screen that you can't see while I'm presenting, but we have ways around that. So I'm going to have us go to our same notes that we were at before. Ooh, that time it went right to it. Finally getting the hang of this. I decided to put all of your Zoom notes or all of your Zoom stuff on Zoom document. That way you can go right from one to the other. So earlier I gave these videos that we did not watch together, but you have them to go back to. And down here, I started going through the advanced settings. I'm gonna go through them like I did in the last session for the, um, for the dashboard. And then the actual settings that are in your Zoom room, I did a video there and then I started a video and ran out of time. So I will have a third video there for you with even more advanced features that you can see because I can share my screen when I um, do a YouTube video. So any questions yet? Nothing, okay. Any questions? I'm getting slap happy. It's the last session of the day. Okay. And I'm still letting people in. All right, here we go. So I'm going to go to Zoom. And the way I have, oh, so if you weren't in the last session, let me say that um, we don't have your upgraded Zoom yet. I would have it if Zoom were a little bit more on the ball. We ordered it and they have a two to three week wait to initiate the Zoom accounts, which I'm rolling my eyes because I don't understand why in 2020 the flick of a button takes two to three weeks, but it has. So we're about a week into that two to three weeks. I have all of your accounts ready to go. You're not going to get a new account. You're just going to see new features show up in your Zoom account. When that happens, there won't be any you know, parades or fireworks, but I'll send out an email to let you know that you've been upgraded. If you have not gone into Zoom at all yet, um, you can let me know, but generally what you'll do is you'll go right to, oh, let me let people in. Um, we'll open a new tab, go to zoom.us, and it'll bring you to this page. Now, right now I'm logged in. I don't know if it'll let me log out. Um, go here. Let me sign out so it looks the way it does when you first get there. Okay, so if you're not signed in or you've never used it before, you would get to this screen and you would go to sign in and you're gonna do sign in with Google. You don't have to use all of this stuff up here. What I've done on the back end is I've put all of your Google addresses into Zoom so they'll match each other up and we'll go from there. If you have trouble, you can reach out to me. But like I said, once we get the upgraded Zoom, then you'll start to see those features pop in. They're still giving away a lot of features for free anyway that are normally not part of the paid account. So you already have a lot of the fun features, but you'll end up getting polling. You'll end up getting the ability to record to the cloud. And um, there was one other, oh, the ability to name your own Zoom room with your own custom name. Okay. So where we left off in the other hour was to go through the settings that I have to keep moving box around that go from the in meeting advanced down to email notifications and other the ever famous other so I'm going to scroll down if you weren't here for the first session and you're curious about anything in these first three you can go back and listen to it um, or if you have a specific question you can always share it with me so now we're getting into the in meeting advanced settings Whew. so I have can I can I just say the blowers in our rooms are turned on to the max. They're so loud. I, we, I, it's almost impossible to hear anything you're saying. And I'm not, it's, it's entirely not your fault, but they're really loud over at the quash. I, I, a few people have reached out to say that. And I left my headphones at home today. And I'm definitely going to bring them, especially because I'm at quash tomorrow. So I'll get to experience that lovely setting. But I would recommend, wait a minute, I have people waiting to come in. Um, I would recommend trying headphones if that helps to drown out the outside noise so that you can focus more. Maybe that will be helpful. Um, I'll, I'll have a better idea of it tomorrow. I 
I'm not sure what to say other than try headphones right now. That's all I got for now, but um, you're not alone. I know that a few people have reached out to me. A lot of headphones. Oh yeah, at the library here, they're wearing headphones because the library is pretty noisy because it's all open like a... All right, people are still coming in. So up here, whether or not uh, to report participants to Zoom, I have that on so that if I needed to report them, like if for some reason I did have someone come into my Zoom that didn't belong there, I could report them. I don't anticipate needing that because the only ones who have links to my Zoom are you people. And even if I have posted any of like the images of the matrix or any of that online, I make sure that I erase the link so that you can't see it. I'm making very, uh, making sure that I'm not posting my Zoom link anywhere except for to the people that I want to come into my room. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't want to put it on your landing page. You don't want to be putting it out on Twitter like, you know, join me in my Zoom tomorrow. Don't do that. Otherwise, you'll get a lot more than just your students. So just be careful with that. Um, breakout rooms. So being allowed to split your meeting participants into separate smaller rooms. So this box is something that you'll want to check if that's something you want to try. We had a few teachers try it back in the spring and um, they were very impressed with how it worked. And a lot of us who took the modern teacher course or who have been in some of the other meetings that we've had this summer have also experienced the breakout rooms. You can assign those groups ahead of time if you know the participants that you'll have in each group or you can do it um, randomly by having Zoom just mix them up or you can do it on the spot and divide people as you go. One of the videos that I posted in the doc show you how to set up a Zoom, um, a breakout room. Although it's hard to show it when I'm the only one in the room. So I might see if I can find some guinea pigs and then demonstrate it with more than just me. Okay. Um, remote support, allow the meeting host to provide one-on-one -on -one remote support to another participant. If you turn this on, then you also have to make sure that you have your breakout rooms on. I believe that it's a way to break off one person from your Zoom chat or from your Zoom experience and to be able to help them. That's one that I have not tried yet. I'm trying to, I'm trying to try everything. It's like eating all of the ice cream flavors on the board at Polar Cave and you still have your favorites that you always want to go to. So that's where I'm at with Zoom. I have not tried this, but it's something that you can turn on and play with. Closed captioning. Zoom is kind of a bummer when it comes to closed captioning. Like they write that and they make me think, oh, that's awesome. But I have it turned on. But right now the, the two best options in Zoom for closed ca captioning is one, you bring a friend with you. And you say, hey, you're a great typist. Will you type everything that I say while I'm in the Zoom and everything my students say? Will you just type it all and then those who need to read it or want to read it can? That's crazy. So we don't want that. And then the other option is to use a third party vendor. Right now I'm trying to find one. I have um, some folks at a company that we do some business with trying to help me find a third party device or vendor to be able to automate those closed captions. I, and it's every site that I've been to, it's not just a click of the button and boom, it happens. So I'm working on that. Then I'm gonna go on the closed captioning tangent right now. Another option for closed captioning, which I will cover again when we do the class on Google Slides for instruction, is to use the closed captioning tool in Google Slides when you're in presentation mode. If I go here, to blended learning and I put it into present and then I come down wait a minute your pictures are in front of my controls let's move all of your cute faces out of my way or not there we go I can turn on closed captioning and then it will capture my voice as I'm talking it's not perfect because it does not use punctuation and if I use the word period at the end of a sentence like I do when I voice text it uses the word not the actual punctuation period see um, also at the end of the presentation it doesn't save any of these captions at the bottom so that kind of stinks the other thing you could do is record your screen while you're doing this and then you'll have that recorded to a video but it brings you to your third option. I'm going to hit escape. And then I'm going to go back to where I was. 
I don't even know where, where was I? I was here. Um, third option is that YouTube does a decent job of putting closed captioning into videos. I actually have a friend of mine that just made a tutorial that I'll be sharing on as part of the YouTube class. It will give you an idea of how to use YouTube for closed captioning, either by uploading a script that you've already created or by letting YouTube fill in the words and then you kind of read through it and make sure that they're all accurate. So there are some options. I wish that they'd all come together and make something perfect, but we don't have perfect yet. I'm gonna take a look at your questions for a second. Um, we need to put our Zoom links on our playlist learning pages, which are linked to our landing pages though, right? That's a good question. So. Your landing pages are public. Anybody can see them. They're gonna be connected to the Mashpee site. So anybody can see a landing page. You're gonna decide from your landing page, are they then gonna to go to your Google Classroom or are they gonna to go to a playlist or are they gonna to go to a learning page? Whatever it is that you wanna link from your landing page, you can make that decision. But you don't want it to, if it's, public facing that's available for people to see that aren't teachers, I mean, ugh, that aren't um, your students, then you don't wanna put your Zoom link out there. So that might have to be hidden inside your Google Classroom. It might have to be sent directly to them in an email. You might have to think of more crafty ways. You can put a note on there saying, you know, lost your Zoom link, you know, contact me and have it be a link to your email or a link to classroom, but you don't want to put your Zoom link out there. That's part of the, the what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, starts with an S. Security, safety, thank you, security, that um, keeps people out that you don't want in. I'm still checking your questions. Put your Zoom link on classroom, yes. Exactly. I set the playlist to Mashby Schools login view only, then True, if your playlist is for only Mashpee login, I think that's fine, then the parents won't be able to see it. That's how you're deciding, you guys decide who's gonna see what. So just make sure that anywhere that you put your Zoom link is not visible to anyone besides the people you want to be able to come into your Zoom. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. Yes, and putting it into classroom would be great. Okay, where did I leave off? Oh, I wasn't here, I was here. I couldn't remember where I was. I was on captioning. See, that was it. All right, language interpretation. Allow hosts to assign participants as interpreters who can interpret one language into another real time. That's the same thing as closed captioning. Will you listen to me speak in English and will you type in Spanish or Portuguese for our students who need that? It's not an automatic system at all. I wish it were. I have no idea what far end camera control is. Don't ask me. The virtual background on some. Um, whether you're allowing it, you, we can also, you might decide as a class that you're going to create a standard background for all your kids or you're not going to allow backgrounds or like the video that we just watched with the, the kid on the bed with the cat and the snacks, like you might want to have some parameters. You get to decide that as a teacher, or as a team, how you're going to handle backgrounds. Um, that's definitely something you guys can decide. They have some that are preloaded that's an option as well. And then video filter. I believe that the filter is that it focuses on your face, so your face is pretty clear, but everything behind you is kind of fuzzy, if I remember right, that you can turn that on if you want to. Um, identify guest participants. So right now, all of you are basically a guest, I believe, when I go through my list. Some of you are not, it's probably because you're using the app and not coming in on the web. So it's just that ability to see how people are logged in. Your students are pretty much all going to be in guest as a guest because they don't have their own accounts and we don't want them to. Auto answer group and chat. Enable users to see and add contacts of auto answer group and the contact list on chat. Any call from members of this group automatically answered. I'm gonna to have to discover more about that That's a new one for me. You can clearly see that there, I'm gonna scroll down fast. There are a ton of settings in here and I wish I knew about all of them, but honestly, I don't know anyone that does. So it's a matter of fooling around with them and now I lost my place. 
<laughs> there it is. Um, only show default email when sending email invites. The default email is the email that you use anyway, so that one really doesn't matter if you're just using your MPS email. Um, don't worry about your HTML. Allow users to select stereo audio in their client settings. I wouldn't worry about that. We're not doing any crazy sound stuff. Even the videos we're watching, we're not looking for them to be surround sound, you know, theater production perfect. Oh, data center regions. I wouldn't worry about that. See, there's a lot you don't have to, we have plenty to worry about enough that we don't have to worry about all of it. Um, show a join from your browser link. I do like this one because on the Chromebooks, the kids have two choices. They can either join via browser, which is within the Chrome browser itself, or within the Zoom application, which like pops up. And some of you I'm guessing are on one and some of you are on another, just based on my prediction and how many are in as a guest. It's nice to have the option in case one is not behaving well, they can always try the other. So I keep that on so that you have that option. Allow live streaming meetings. We have not explored that to know, um, like I'm live streaming to you right now, but I think when they say live streaming, it goes to like a source like to YouTube or to somewhere else. If I turn it on, right, yeah. See, we don't wanna be streaming to Facebook or YouTube. So I'm gonna keep that off, but that's pretty interesting. Um, request permission to unmute. So if you've muted, like if I have you all muted right now, I could put this setting on. And now if you wanted to unmute, you would have to send me a request to ask me if you can. So depending on how that unfolds in your classroom, it's something that you know you have up your sleeve if you need it. Okay, so now email notifications, as we all get plenty of emails. I get notifications when my cloud recording is available. So when I'm done recording, it will send me an email to let me know that it's done. That way I don't have to keep coming back here to my settings to check and see if it's done. Um, I can also send a copy to the person who scheduled the meeting if that's someone else or to the alternative hope they need to know that. And I know some of you have to leave at 2.30. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do anything crazy and awesome without you, but I'll be recording it just in case I do. Um, if you want emails when people try to join before you, I do have that on, which is kind of cool. I'll get an email over the spring. I got it on because it was great if people came in to get help and I wasn't in my room offering tech help. I could then reach out to them on email and say, hey, I noticed you tried to come in for help and I wasn't there, can I help you? Um, or when a meeting is canceled, do you want to get an email or if you've changed the host or changed the meeting or all of those things you decide if you want that or not. When a cloud recording is going to be permanently deleted from the trash, you could turn that on because your cloud will only hold so many recordings. Ooh, this is iOS. So when they talk about iOS, they're talking about on an iPad or on an um, iPhone. Enable the option to hide potentially sensitive information from the snapshot of the Zoom main window. The snapshot displayed as a preview screen in the iOS task switcher when multiple apps are open. So it just gives you more privacy if you're on an iOS device. Invitation email, um, being able to choose the language that your invite is going out to. I don't know, they don't have a ton of choices, but Perhaps some of those would be of need and then you can get a preview email to see what that's gonna look like. And then if you're gonna give privileges to schedule meetings to other people. So I know some people right now have pro accounts, um, mostly like um, admin and people who are like directors, that type of thing. If they wanna be able to give permission to other people to schedule, I believe that, that you just hit the plus sign and you put their email in and then they should be able to schedule meetings as well. And then I would not worry about this. I can't believe we went through all those settings. That's crazy, 226. So anyone who is heading off to the next meeting, at least you got through the part that's the hardest to, the hardest to go through, I think. So now, because I can't show you my settings on my screen while we're having a Zoom in doc here. Like I said, I've done one about the advanced settings, which we just talked about, so you don't have to watch that unless you like 
hearing about all of it again in a different way. Um, and then this advanced stuff here is talking about what you can do in your room. And like I said, I started to do the follow up because I ran out of um, time before I had to be on this Zoom. So I'm going to add to that tonight so that you'll have another email, another video that will talk about the advanced stuff. So it is 2.27. That gives us 10 minutes for if you want to watch that video, you can. Or if you want to be able to go back and look at things that were in here that you didn't earlier. And then in 10 minutes, we'll do a Q&A, unless you have questions now, of course, I'll take them. And that'll end us at 2.50. So, so 72 times. How many of you are in here? You guys are heading out to your next meetings, which is fine. That's going to be unfortunate people. So reach out if you need me. I'm going to give you about 10 minutes of time to just explore what you want, watch a video if you want, go check out your settings in Zoom if you want, and I will be here. And at 20 of, we will do a q &A. Hey, Susie, I wrote this in the chat. I'm about to bug out to the other meeting. Um, I know you said not to put Zoom links on your landing page and you can put it in Google Classroom, but are, should we not have our classroom codes on our landing page? Because if you have that code, then you can still get the Zoom code. Right. But the only people who can join your Google Classroom are those with the MPS email. We have right. that. We have that. So like Joe Schmo on the street can't join your Google Classroom with his regular email. The only ones that are going to be able to join are students. And then you'll see them in Google Classroom. So you can, right. like a student shows up in there and wait a minute, I don't even have you. You can boot them up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like if it's somebody from another building that right. just randomly isn't. Okay. And I, I also, Mary Russell had written a question that I also have. Um, is the whiteboard info in these notes in your that's, Google Doc? The, that's the part that's going to go at the end. Okay. But let me, um, let me go in there now. I can show you at least from your side how that works. Um, so I have to stop sharing my screen. Hi, everyone. <laughs> okay. So my whiteboard, I'm going to go down to share screen again. And of the choices that I have, you guys can't see this right now, but the first choice is always whiteboard. And then I'm going to hit share. So this is going to be the next video that I'll make and I'll post this. So now on your end, you should see the, the whiteboard and if you float your mouse near the top of the whiteboard I am guessing that you might be able to see the tools maybe you see the text tool that you can type or you see the drawing tool and you can pick something and draw you can find the stamps and you can put stamps in here go ahead and interact with it if you want to I think I have the permission set that you can if not, holler and you able to touch it? Um, I'll, I'll definitely pop in. Um, and I don't know if I'm not one draw or stamp or anything. I don't know if it's interactive on your end. I don't know if I didn't allow it. Let's see. Here, hope somebody's in. How do I let them in here? Let me just make sure that my settings are set so that you can. I believe I have that on. Whiteboard. Hold on one second. See, this is where it's nice to have people in front of me so I can look at their screen and see what they see. Can someone unmute and tell me, A, can you see the whiteboard with the hearts and the squiggle and all the letter H's? I, I can see it, but I don't see what you're clicking on to to get it, but that's fine. No, it's not fine. That's what I want to figure out. So let's see. If you... In my screen, it's showing as host disabled participant screen sharing. So it's like something, something it says you stopped us from sharing the screen with you. Right, so you can't share your screen, meaning you can't show your screen,
But if you float your mouse up around that green area where it says like you're like someone's sharing their screen, just some tools pop up, a little toolbar. And it should say like text, draw, stamp, spotlight. Float your mouse around. I'm looking to see. Yeah, I think that's only on the host. Um, go here. Because I have annotation enabled. Show the names of annotators. Oh, there you go. Rhonda, will you say how you did that? There we go. All right. Anybody who just on my board. I, I, I uh, came out there. How'd she do it? Okay. What I did, I did what Susie said on the top where it says you are viewing Susie's screen. I went to view options. And from there, it says annotate. And I clicked on that. And then I was able to have like a text box. I only have fit to window and enter full screen. So maybe I need to go full screen. Yep, I'm on full screen. Maybe that. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank something. you. So I see people's names popping up across the screen. Yep, that was a setting that while you guys were figuring that out, I oh, found there it is. that you can either display their names or not display their names. I think displaying them is a great idea. I'll make sure I show that in my video. Anyone having trouble getting into it? Yeah, I see you are viewing Suzy Book's screen. I go to, it just says options. Yeah. I drop down and it says original size or enter full screen. I'm, I'm not following with like a toolbox or something like that. So when you click on options, when you go into full screen, okay. does it still say options? Uh, yep. And then it does it say annotate? Anno annotate. And yeah, I'm not seeing annotate. Me uh, neither. It says original size, exit full screen. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I agree. I have the same thing as Mrs. Smith. Under settings, I've got oh, some options video, audio, accessibility, statistics, and about. God, I'm going to go look at it here. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't get it either. I get the op options of the same thing. Exit the screen. I'm on full screen. So I see that. Fit to window or exit full screen. I saw that lunch. Yeah. Nope. So it should say annotate somewhere. Hmm. Oh, what's coming up? Say it again. Do it again, whatever you do. It might be up here on the. This is so, this Chromebook is so wacky. I can't even tell you. Yeah, I'm right there. What the Chromebook saying? Oh, I guarantee you. I, mean, I, I can't even tell you. I'm emailing the parent and next thing I know, I'm going to, to China, my application to China. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I wonder if it's a Chromebook thing. I'm I now. think so. Ask him if oh. he's on his Chromebook and not I'm, his. Um, yeah, I'm on the Chromebook. Can you right now? Oh, oh. You're on your Chromebook. Yeah, I, I am. yeah. All right. Then I, me too. And so that's why. Okay. That's why I think we're okay. So, so if sorry. we can only use the Chromebook to annotate, what are we going to do with our students? And they can't use this feature. Well, what I'm wondering is, is anyone that's having the ability to draw and annotate on a Chromebook? I'm wondering if it's a version of the Chromebook. Is there anyone out there who is having no trouble at all and you are on a Chromebook? Oh, the dead silence is going to kill me. No. <laughs> that is not funny. Okay. So that's something I'm going to have to look into. I know that um, we just might not use the whiteboard within yeah. Zoom. We might have to use a different whiteboard like the one that Suzanne suggested yesterday instead which also allows each student to have their own whiteboard. Right now you're all sharing one, which could be, could be. How, how many people are using their school provided desktop for this right now? Anybody else? Okay. I'm, 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 
I think most of us, our desktop doesn't have um, a microphone or a camera, so we have to use our Chromebook. Oh, because I got, I had a micro or a, a camera installed this year. They didn't do it for everybody. No, we got, little, we have kind of old PCs. Oh, okay. PCs probably. Mine, mine's on the top on the back and it pops up. No, no, we have old, old ones. <laughs> oh, okay. In, in my case, there's some new equipment, which was just adjusted right before the meeting. Uh, so I could probably try it on that at another time, but I already had been logged on to this. I'm on the Chromebook right now, but uh, I think the desktop is working. I'll, I'll figure some of this out later. And I know also I have a um, basically a spreadsheet that shows all of the different features that Zoom has and how or what they work on or don't work on, which I will share. I'll put it in these notes so that you guys have a, that idea of what features will work where and what features won't. Sometimes I wonder if it's an operating system thing, like a newer device will handle it better than an older device, but it sounds like the Chromebooks are not gonna be great about using the whiteboard annotation, shared annotation skills. But as a teacher, like I could clear it right now, I'm gonna clear all the drawings. So I could use it right now as a teacher for whatever I need to use it for and share it and you can all see it, right? If you're on a Chromebook or not, yes? And you could have the students um, like minimize the Zoom window and log into that um, website that that um, Suzanne mentioned yesterday. The I forget whiteboard dot something. Um, so they could be you could you know they could be on the Zoom. Maybe you wouldn't even need the Zoom at that point though. Right, right. That's what I was. I guess you would still need the Zoom for audio, though, if you wanted to have a conversation while you were. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's whiteboard.fi. I put it down in the comments or the chat. Thanks, Suzanne. You want to put that into the Zoom Google Doc if you're there, too? Whiteboard.fi. And then each student has their own whiteboard too. I can imagine that everybody's sharing one whiteboard, even though it was fun for about four and a half seconds. Like I'd have to really think about how to use it and are they all gonna use it at once or am I only gonna allow one student at a time to use it? So thinking about, oh, it's cool, but do I need it? Is it the best tool? I don't know. So let's know that we have a couple of options, which is good. And we know that the teacher can use it if they need to also. All right. Um, I'm going back to the chat wherever I lost that. <laughs> Let me see. Hover over the bottom of your screen. <laughs> that pops up. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm back. Okay. Your question. Yeah. Whiteboard if right. I'm putting that in the chat. Okay. All right. Yeah, Jen saying, oh, all right, Jen, I know that you and I worked for a long time about how to use the um, the whiteboard for annotation, but on the Chromebooks. Maybe that will change over the next few months as Zoom makes upgrades and such. All right, it's 2.41, so even though we've been asking and answering questions anyway, um, I will do a video on the whiteboard features. I'm also, I'm trying to remember what I've already done. I already did a video on breakout rooms. I said in the other hour before this one that I've been trying to wrap my head around how to have a co-host or I've been calling it a co-pilot. So I reached out to Hope saying like, I know we have parent volunteers that are bummed that they can't come in. And I know saying parent volunteers at different grade levels has different reactions like, oh, goody, or no way. Um, so it, but having someone as a co-pilot that can answer your doorbell, that can tell you that there's questions in the chat, that can put links in for you, um, maybe that might be a stretch, but the, the concept I'm trying to wrap my head around so that you can have some help when you need it. Um, so Hope is gonna reach out to Consuelo and because she also has people who want to help. They wanna be able to volunteer. She was saying that they wanna be techie help. So just know it's, it's a 
it's a snowflake in my mind right now and it'll hopefully become a blizzard but i'm just kind of giving you a preview as to what i'm thinking about because i think it would be a huge difference like my mom used to volunteer in my classroom every single week i could get her to do anything i would be getting her to be my co-pilot here in zoom um will i provide a document with the various docs links videos and everything that you send out on email that i could send out on email i can yes just remember that, let me share my screen for a minute. I go back to Chrome, share, that this document here, this is a link to everything, even though it's very busy and there's a lot to see. When you go into this matrix, and let's say you wanted to get back to the resources that we did today, then you would click on today's course, you'd go to that slide. As of tomorrow, there'll be a link to the recording here it's not there yet because we're still recording. Wave hi. But over here is the link that brings you to the Google Doc that has all the resources and all the things that we're sharing in there. And I'll keep updating those. So that is the document that really I'm using as a central location for everything. So hopefully that's a way for you to get back to all of it. And where there's so many courses, it would be great if there were only two courses, but there's 28 of them. So trying to organize 28 courses. Woo. That was the, the what I came up with. But if you get stuck, let me know. All right. Um, I'm reading your notes, but if you have questions, you can unmute too. I just read 17 questions I've already read. All right. Find a document. Thank you. Does one of the videos tell us how to Zoom with each class each day? Are we setting up a repeat meeting? I did go over that in the class before. There, you can set up repeat meetings if you want to. You can create, like if I go, uh, I'm gonna share my screen again. I'm gonna share my screen. Go in here and share. And I go into meetings. So what I did earlier is I just created a, um, repeating meeting that goes from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. every day. And so when I'm ready to go in and open that class, I would just go and click start and it would start that particular class with that particular link. If I wanted to have only certain students in that particular room, then I would share that link with them, which I, if I click on the name of the class, it will bring me into all the settings. And it has, this is the link here that you would send to them. So those kids would have this link if that's what you want to do. And then you could go back and you could schedule a different meeting that's at two o'clock every day. Whatever works for you at the different schools, it's going to look very different. The elementary schools will probably be creating one room that you come in and out of all the time. Where those of you, those of you at the middle high school will probably want to consider creating different codes for different classes or do only one. I don't feel that there's any right or wrong answer to this. And if you need to switch at some point, then switch. And then you guys at QuashNet, which I think you're all in a meeting right now, um, whatever works for you too. And if you want to think through it with me, then because I think that helps. I was just sitting here talking to Meg a little while ago, um, trying to think through some logistics. It helps to bounce ideas around. And it doesn't have to be me. You can talk to each other too. You're all very smart. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. We're at 2.45, checking the questions. Feel free to interrupt me if you want to. Okay, so can we do the repeating meetings the way that you're doing with these sessions using a permanent personal Yes, you can. So I'm using the same code every single day for all of you, no matter what, you know this is where you're coming. But if you later on needed help with something and you hopped in, you wanted help with Zoom and I'm doing a class on Sheets, I might not want you in there. But you guys aren't like, you know, you're adults and I know that you're pretty much only gonna come in for the ones that you want to or that you'll wait your turn or what have you. So yes, you can have one link for everybody. Just know that you might have people coming in at times that you don't need or want them to. So that might be a reason to create separate ones, whatever works for you. How's that for a non-committal answer? It's my favorite kind of answer. <laughs> Was there something 
besides the whiteboard, which I covered a little bit here, but I, I'm gonna make a video about it just so that it's clearer. Um, was there something, oh, polling. I'm answering my own question. Polling, when you're in, and I'm gonna have to make a video because you can't see my screen right now, but there is a button at the bottom of your screen that you can click that says polling. And when you click on it, you click add a question. You'll get this when you have your paid account. And it's bringing me to my Zoom for some reason. Why is it not letting me do it in here? All right, let's sign in. Oh, you might be able to see it now. Let me get in. Yes, Brooks. So now, why is it? Sorry to pause on you. When I'm clicking on it in the app, it's opening up my, unless I do edit. Oh, right there. I think you can, see, oh, you can't because it's coming up in Firefox, Firefox. All right, let me close this, close this. Hang on people, I got this. I didn't realize I could do this. Share my screen. And I'm gonna share Google Chrome because it opened it in Firefox and you wouldn't have been able to see it there. I'm gonna go. I have to say that every time you've said that lately, share a screen on my end, it sounds like share a scream and I'm willing to do that. <laughs> That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Oh, where did it go? All right, profile. I am looking for, I just had it on my other screen. No, no. <laughs> Here, let me do a Google, let me do a search and see if I can find it. Um, oh my goodness, I could just find it a second ago and now I can't. That's, nope. I'm not under there. Settings. It just said polling on my thing. Uh, all right, I'm gonna have to figure that out and make a video for it rather than just stumble around in front of you. <laughs> but keep those questions coming. <laughs> hmm. Seriously. Let me see if I can your help. No. I go to here and I type in poll. Not cool. The Zoom help is a robot. It's not a real person. Before creating a poll, the polling feature needs to be enabled. To enable the feature on your profile, click settings. You can also use the link below to get to your settings page. We'll do that. I think that that will still be open. No, of course not. Poll. <laughs> this is how we learn people the hard way in. Oh my goodness, the robot's still going. Before creating a poll, go to your settings. Under the meeting basic, find and enable polling. So under meeting basic, I'm looking for polling. I thought I already had it enabled, but I check auto save, file transfer, zoom, close polling, and it is it is enabled. Now that polling is enabled, you can now create a poll. Are you trying to create one for a meeting or a webinar for a meeting? That helpful? No, it wasn't because I already had it enabled. To create a poll for a meeting, first navigate to your meetings page. Click the topic of a scheduled meeting. I might not be able to do it in my actual Zoom room instead of in a scheduled meeting. That might be part of it. Scroll to the bottom, get a title, enter your question. So I'm going to guess that's what it is. I'm going to have to play with it and see that you can, if you can only do polls in scheduled meetings and not in meetings on the fly. Again, some things I'm learning the hard way. Hopefully I'm not the only one. All right, reading questions. It's 10 of, so I try to stop by then, but I will stay here till three or long. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell who's writing on the whiteboard? Yes, you can. You can enable the setting in there that shows the names. 
what's a personal room so the personal room is under the meeting tab right now your personal room is probably a bunch of numbers once we have a paid account which is hopefully in about two weeks tops um, then you'll be able to name it something um, custom all right we have reached the end of four zooms today people Does anyone have any last thoughts, questions? I want my address so you can send flowers. <laughs> oh, I went out to eat last night. I might have to do that again tonight. All right, so if you need me, I'm here. If you wanna, oh, I'm gonna stop recording before I forget. <laughs> Where the heck do I stop recording? There we go, stop. And then stop.